Coming up on WYLN News, a new program launched by the Pennsylvania Attorney General aims to keep prescription drugs out of the wrong hands. This is your news choice. WYLN News starts right now. From the WYLN studios in Hazleton and all over northeastern Pennsylvania, this is WYLN News. Good evening, and thank you for joining us on WYLN News. I'm Paula Dagnan. A Hazleton resident was convicted Monday in Northampton County Court on a single count of terroristic threats. It had to do with a series of threatening emails Sean Donahue sent to Luzerne County District Attorney Stephanie Salavantis. She received those emails in August of 2012. The 48-year-old Donahue was granted a change of venue for the trial back in April, sentencing will be imposed at a later date. A Frackville man was arrested over the weekend for making terroristic threats. 25-year-old Shane Costigno got into a dispute with Jill Popolis around 10.30 Saturday night at a home on West Chestnut Street. Police arrived on the scene and found that Costigno had was in the attic armed with a knife threatening to kill himself. Popolis told police that earlier in the day, the man threatened to kill her and himself. He also allegedly threatened to burn the house down. He was taken into custody and charged with four counts of arson and related offenses, simple assault, possession of drug paraphernalia, terroristic threats, among similar charges. He was arraigned and taken to the Schuylkill County Prison for lack of $50,000 straight cash bail. The state attorney general unveiled a new major initiative to reduce the diversion of prescription drugs in Pennsylvania. WILN's Gary Perna has more on just what that initiative is. Attorney General Josh Shapiro has announced his office will supply 300,000 drug deactivation and disposal pouches to pharmacies and 12 counties. And one of those counties is Luzerne. And we are taking action that we're expanding our fight to these small towns by providing an easy to use, convenient way to dispose of unused and dangerous prescription drugs so we can stop, as I said, the next person from becoming an addict. Through the new initiative, the Attorney General is acting to make sure anyone receiving a Schedule II narcotics at a participating pharmacy will be offered a free disposal pouch. And the Attorney General wants to make sure that anyone can obtain a free pouch as well to safely dispose of any unwanted or unused prescription drugs. By August 1st, free drug deactivation pouches will be available in two 178 pharmacies across Pennsylvania. Locally, those pharmacies taking part in the program include CVS's in Hazleton and in Freeland, the Rite Aid on North Church Street in Hazleton, and the pharmacy at the Walmart in Hazel Township, along with ones in Wilkesbury, Whitehaven, and other Luzerne County communities. The Attorney General said 80% of heroin addicts start with the abuse of prescription drugs. And the vast majority of those who misuse those drugs get them from friends, relatives, or a medicine cabinet. And we are fighting this on every front, from every angle. But I need you to join this fight. I need you to help us in law enforcement dispose of these unused medications. Put them in a pouch that you can get here at Klingen Smith's and at pharmacies across Pennsylvania and dispose of them before they can be used to create another addict, before they can be used to harm a youngster, before they can be used to wreak more havoc on our communities here in Pennsylvania. The drug pouches can deactivate up to 45 unwanted pills when warm water is added to the pouches and they are sealed. The pouches then can be disposed of in the trash. In the first six months of 2017, the Office of Attorney General and the Pennsylvania National Guard destroyed 22.68 tons of unwanted prescription drugs collected from communities across Pennsylvania. By comparison, 26 tons of unused drugs were disposed of in all of 2016. As part of the new initiative, the Attorney General's office has made a website available to the public to learn more about the participating pharmacies and their locations. You can find that info at www.attorneygeneral.gov. 
Reporting for WYLN News, I'm Gary Perna. Thank you, Gary. This morning, PennDOT had to do some emergency bridge repair in one part of Luzerne County that caused a mess, particularly in the area of Mountaintop. The work started this morning on a bridge on Interstate 81 North between the Mountaintop exit 165A and Wilkesboro exit 165B, according to PennDOT. Crews hope to have those repairs completed by this evening. Luzerne County Council members received a bit of good financial news at last night's meeting. An audit was done on the county's 2016 financial statements by Clifton Larson Allen LLP. Auditors discovered that the county transferred money from its general fund to the Children and Youth Agency in 2015. The agency reimbursed the county and around $800,000 remains from the prepaid expenses. County Manager David Pedry wants to put that money to a fund to help with the county's deficit. Council is also expected to vote on a capital plan at its meeting on July 25th. Coming up on WILN News, good economic news. We'll tell you where new jobs and businesses are coming. Plus, we will learn from what one of our international neighbors has in common with us when it comes to energy. But first, as we head out to break, let's take a look at your seven-day forecast from the WYLN Weather Center. Remember, you can get all your weather information at WYLNTV.com. We'll be right back. Physical therapy and balance centers. It's spelled different because we are different. Physical is unlike any therapy center you've been to before. If you're tired of living in pain, if you want to move better, overcome an injury or balance disorder, or you just want to improve your strength and conditioning, our highly skilled team of medical experts will help you get back to living the life you enjoy. New mentality, new body, new life. Get physical. All Care Home Care, providing quality in home care since 1986. Call and see how their team of licensed physical therapists, skilled nurses, speech, and occupational therapists can provide you with exceptional service in the comfort of your own home. They also offer dietitian, home health aid, and medical social worker services. You have a choice in your health care. For safe, friendly, qualified care, call All Care Home Care today and let their team begin taking care of you and your loved ones. Two new businesses are coming to Banks Township. Monday night, the Banks Township Zoning Board approved the request of Manuel Zamudo and Diana Vary to open a restaurant and tax and notary office in the old Bucky's Hotel building off 309 in Audenreed. The tax and notary office will be on one side of the building. The Mexican and American food restaurant will be on the other side. The owners will have to complete with conditions from the zoning board. No word yet when the businesses will open in that part of Banks Township. A company that manufactures delivery equipment will bring in new jobs to Salem Township in Luzerne County. Governor Tom Wolf announcing today that Mickey Truck Bodies Incorporated of High Point, North Carolina, will be building a facility in the area, creating 50 new manufacturing jobs over the next three years. The company will invest around $7 million for the project. It received a $50,000 grant from the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic development, $50,000 in job creation tax credits, which it will receive after the jobs have been created. Mickey manufactures high-quality aluminum truck bodies and trailers for several industries.
Coming up on Tuscarora's News Choice, a presentation next week by a European energy policy expert is coming to Wilkes-Barre. Plus, get ready, Farmer's Market Friday's on the way. But first, let's take a look at today's winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played. Stay with us. Your body was made to move, fluidly and with ease. If the need for joint replacement surgery has stopped you in your tracks, it's time for a plan that can put you back in motion faster. The area's most experienced surgeons, the region's only nationally ranked program. That's Orthopedics in Action at Lehigh Valley Health Network. Visit the Luzerne County Convention and Visitors Bureau at visitluzernecounty.com for the listings of the many events you'll find in Luzerne County. From wine festivals to hill climbs to the famous tomato and kielbasa festivals, you'll find it all in Luzerne County. Luzerne County was named the best outdoors destination in Pennsylvania by the official Best in Pennsylvania website. The Luzerne County Convention and Visitors Bureau will help you relax, relive history, and marvel at the area's stunning natural beauty. You'll find it right here in northeastern Pennsylvania. Watch Off the Beaten Path on WYLN TV 35 and discover the Pennsylvania you never knew existed. Welcome to Community and You, and there are many things and many places in our community that you and I probably don't have the opportunity to even remotely see or maybe even want to see. But Mike Hewitt, with me, has seen a lot. Tell us where you're from and what exactly you do. Well, originally I'm from Montrose, Pennsylvania, and uh, it's, you know, pretty clean landscape up there and I used to hunt and fish with my father and my parents, uh, my mother. And uh, I come down here and uh, to the Scranton Wilkes-Barre area and you see these uh, giant black coal piles, you know, mountains of, of coal waste and then these orange streams. Um, so as a kid I was always fascinated as why in the world are those things there? Um, so went off to college at Lock Haven University, studied envir environmental sciences. I'm a uh, environmental biologist by trade, um, but work here at EPCAMR, um, I started as an intern and uh, started working with Robert Hughes and, and the group here at EPCAMR. And, uh, a lot of the work that we do is to uh, clean up those old abandoned coal mine sites that uh, uh, frankly have just been left there f since the uh, coal days and um, through certain laws um, weren't necessarily as stringent back in the past and uh, didn't really have to uh, you know clean up these coal sites mm -hmm. uh, so but today we have a little bit more stringent laws and um, you know there's ways to go through and, and clean those up and the, and the coal companies are always a partner in that. Yeah. Now you're located here in Hanover Township in the Earth Conservancy building and we could do a whole program just on this building by yeah. itself because it was reclaimed yeah. actually wasn't it? Sure yeah um, we're here in Ashley actually um, one square mile is Ashley <laughs> and then uh, Hanover Township goes around it but uh, yeah, this used to be the Blue Coal Corporation uh, headquarters. And uh, the room that we're in right now was actually, um, I believe, uh, counting offices. And um, Earth Conservancy is over in the other side, and Epcamer rents um, some space on this side. And yeah, uh, so this building was built in the, in the 50s. 
Um, but then behind it, it, it went along with the breaker that was here, uh, the Huber breaker that was torn down in 2014 uh, and sold for scrap. Yeah, that, the, again, I think a lot of people probably remember that. Now, we're talking about, you mentioned coal. Coal, we always hear about in our area. And a lot of times, people don't realize that there's been coal all over the place, energy. You took a trip to Germany and did a little bit of research on coal. How did that go? Sure, yeah, I was lucky to be one of 12 Americans that uh, was funded through the, F the Heinrich Boll Foundation uh, to go over to Germany and learn about their coal mining um, and their transition from, um, you know, the, the fossil fuel industry and the uh, power plants into more of a renewable environment and renewable power. Um, the Heinrich Boll Foundation is actually kind of the think tank for the Green Party in, in Germany. And so uh, they actually helped us to understand uh, the transition that started back in the 80s and 90s, um, you know, with the, um, the power transition that happened back then and uh, went from coal and uh, their nuclear power. Mm -hmm. And now they're working on phasing that out and then going more into renewables. But there's always got to be a mix mm -hmm. of power. And so um, that's what we were there to learn. So now Germany is coming here. That's right. And fascinating that they approached you, not you personally, but they approached the area in order to come here. Who's coming? When does this happen? And can other people attend? So a gentleman by the name of Tim o Timon Weinert is coming from the Wuppertal Institute. Uh, I had an opportunity to meet one of his colleagues uh, when I was over in Germany at the Heinrich Boll Foundation headquarters, and uh, he made a very interesting uh, uh, presentation to the group um, about you know what happens as far as the transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy, but also what had to happen on the on the government side and the policy side of everything. So um, yeah, he's going to be here on July 20th uh, fr at 7 o'clock at night at uh, the Stark Building um, on Wilkes University campus. Uh, Wilkes was very uh, generous to host him and uh, we'll have some light refreshments and uh, have a have him talk and then a panel presentation for from uh, different uh, organizations uh, around this area and kind of give him a perspective on what we're doing um, as far as, uh, you know, trying to do some sort of an energy transition wow. out here. So you could actually have a bearing on something that happens global. Oh, uh, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> possibly. <laughs> uh, and uh, how are the tickets available for this? Can anybody attend? How does that work? Sure. It's free to the public. Um, and uh, yeah, there's really, we're not exactly sure how many people we're gonna get, but we're hopefully gonna get a crowd. We're at Stark 101, so that uh, facility is hopefully big enough to fit uh, a lot of people. All right, how yeah. can they get can they get tickets on the Wilkes website or your website? Uh, there's information on our Facebook page about it, and uh, we'll be circulating around a flyer uh, that will talk about it. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, Wilkes uh, university will have it through their promotions page. And we'll be able to make sure that we have it on the WILN Facebook page as well. So did the little boy from Montrose ever think that he would be going global and having people from Germany show up in his backyard? Not a clue. No, <laughs> not at all. Um, it was really cool to go over there and see the different types of coal that they had too. We started off in Berlin where they have lignite coal and then went down uh, south uh, to the Lausitz region, and it's a lignite type of coal there. But then when you come over to the um, the western side of Germany, uh, you get into anthracite coal like we have here. And so they have a lot of the same problems with the mine drainage problems and the mine pools and the, uh, the depth of coal. They had to do so much pumping to get to their coal. To get to their coal. And at one point in time, they were actually subsidizing all of that pumping, and it just made it... Uh, you know, subsidizing it through the government to pump the water um, so that they could actually sell it on the open market. Wow. And they were losing money. It's, it just fascinates me that people don't realize how much in common they have with other people. 
and it doesn't mean that they're right next door but all the way across the pond as it were so once again Mike Hewitt, if you would, just tell everybody where and when and give them the invite. Yeah, so um, it'll be the uh, Wuppert Hall Institute is coming to Wilkes University on July 20th uh, at 7 o'clock, and it'll be at the Stark Learning Center, Stark 101, and uh, it's free and open to the public. Great. And we certainly hope that you will take the opportunity to enjoy, learn, and come back and join us on Community and You. with my website. Thank you for calling web.com. How can I help you? I need some serious help with my website. I could definitely help you with that today. Awesome. If you want to work in a fun atmosphere and help small businesses like this succeed online, call 1-844-JOBS-WEB and apply today. WYLNCA 35's children's programming is designed with the specific purpose of serving the educational and informational needs of children. In compliance with FCC guidelines, a copy of the children's programming report is on file for public inspection at WYLN, 1057 East 10th Street, Hazleton, PA, during normal business hours, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. It's almost here, downtown Hazleton's Farmer's Market, opening this Friday. Recently, Chamber President Mary Malone stopped by to talk with us about the market and what you can expect. To 2 p.m., right on Broad Street, between Laurel and Pine, right on the sidewalk there. Fresh produce, we also usually have some other food vendors, some information. Um, from different from different folks. We've had the Keystone Job Corps kids and some of their trades will be there. So usually we have Lehigh Valley Hospital Health Alliance with, you know, doing blood pressures, the Master Gardeners from Penn State. So it really is an interesting um, mix of vendors and local produce. Farm Fresh every Friday downtown. So you have to, to get there because there's always something different. You do, and you can always tell when the corn is at its sweet. <laughs> Is because <laughs> as soon as the farmer Lenny Berger backs his truck up, people are there to, uh, and it really is nice. Again, we have lots of folks that are in the downtown, the senior high rises and whatnot. That right in the city, you can uh, you can get that from ten to two. And if there's anyone out there that's interested in being a vendor, if you're a crafter or something like that, again, call the chamber office. Uh, maybe just a one-time showing or something like that. But we're open to all of those things. And the market will be open at 10 a.m. and run to 2 p.m. every Friday through September 1st. And also a shout out to Wilkes-Barre if you're in that area tomorrow. The Thursday Farmer's Market on the Square will be happening there. Stay with us. A look at today's weather is next here on WYLN News. It's time to find your copy of The Freeland Progress. Look inside for information on the Pennsylvania Dart Tournament and more. The Freeland Progress is free at locations throughout Freeland, Whitehaven, Blakeslee, Berwick, Cunningham, Drums, and the Hazleton area. For over 25 years, Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, 118 Boulevard Road, Bloomsburg, has provided professionally designed skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields. All stations are handicapped accessible with resident NRA certified shooting instructors on site. There are packages available to fit anyone's budget, restaurant and catering on site. Our facility is also available for weddings, business meetings, bachelor and private parties. Call 570-384-2314. This summer it returns, an all new season of Warrior Summit Outdoors. More than an outdoor show, it's a show about saving the lives of America's finest. 
Tune in to see Iraq, Afghanistan veteran host, Staff Sergeant Eric Olson, and other combat veterans heal the scars of war in the great outdoors. The new season premieres this July. When you see news happening in your neighborhood, call WYLN News at 570-459-1869 or email us at news at WYLNTV.com or send us a message on social media through Facebook. WYLN, we're your local network.